Hi, I'm here to talk about a weird refugee case that's happening right now in the European Union. Can you imagine that with all those refugees from poor and war-torn countries coming in, still the European Union created a political refugee of its own? Sounds weird, right? Well, let's look into it. In 2006, a guy named Gregorian Bivalaru fled Romania to Sweden looking for asylum. The Swedish authorities checked his case up to the highest court. They found that he was persecuted in Romania, wouldn't get a fair trial or have his safety guaranteed there, so he got the status of a political refugee. Since then, Mr. Bivalaru is a permanent resident of Sweden with the right to live there in peace and freedom. This could be the happy ending of a weird case, but it's not. While Mr. Bivalaru tried to live his life in the EU, doing things people can do in the EU, like going to France to see a book fair, he obviously thought that the European Union would respect his human rights and honor his asylum. I mean, this is supposed to be the most developed continent in the world, right? Maintaining the highest social standards. But apparently some people didn't get the memo. What happened was that the Romanian police sent charges to Europol to get the French police to go to the book fair and arrest him. And there he is now, sitting in jail in France, waiting for extradition or trial. So did he commit a new crime to be a wanted fugitive across Europe? No. They're arresting him for the same charges that Sweden said was persecution 10 years ago. So in France he's a fugitive, and in Sweden he's a refugee. What kind of a union is this? And this is not a small thing, because putting a political refugee on the Europol Most Wanted list violates his rights in the Geneva Convention on Refugees. So what happened to European Union standards for protecting human rights? Let's see what Sweden found to persuade them that he should be a refugee and not extradited to Romania in the first place. The Supreme Court in Stockholm found a history of persecution based on his spiritual beliefs. It started in communist times and continued throughout the 1990s, culminating in dozens of accusations by Romanian authorities in 2004. Stockholm concluded that in Romania he wouldn't get a fair process and his safety in jail was in serious doubt. What kind of beliefs get this kind of heat? So who is Mr. Bivolaru, after all? Gregorian Bivolaru became fascinated by Eastern mysticism early in life and began practicing yoga at the age of 16. He started to teach yoga in the late 1970s, and in 1990 he founded his yoga school, Misa. He created a university-style yoga course with teachings that build in depth and complexity with each year of study and cover many subjects within yoga, over the next decades, he had thousands of students across Romania, and branches started to open across Europe. So he was persecuted for doing yoga, according to Sweden up to modern times. So how could Franz get dragged in on the Romanian side? Well, actually, he was convicted of a crime in Romania, after the charges in 2004 were either dropped or tried and acquitted. One still stuck. Sexual relations with a minor. They finally convicted him for that in 2013, when he wasn't there and wasn't allowed to defend himself. So what happened there, and who was the victim? She was a 17-year-old girl who was taken and held by Romanian police for 10 hours without a lawyer, during which time she signed a statement they had prepared. When they finally let her go, she withdrew the statement saying it was made under duress, and did everything she could to get it withdrawn from evidence. Still, it was the basis of the case against him. We can hear directly from her what she said there. Cu participarea tacită a procuraturii, a poliției și a SRI-ului și chiar a judecătorilor, am fost constrânsă să dau declarații false și am fost închisă în mod ilegal. Am fost bătută, am fost amenințată cu moartea. Am fost terorizată cu închisarea, pe nedrept. So if she says this, and they still get a conviction, how does Romania claim to meet European standards of justice? In 2006, the Prime Minister of Romania at the time, Kalin Tarciano, was worried about accession to the EU, and he said, if the yoga teacher is granted asylum in Sweden because his fundamental rights are not respected here in Romania, then that is a clear proof of the fact that justice does not function here. 
So first of all, why hasn't the persecution stopped since Romania joined the European Union? And second of all, why doesn't the European Union and its institutions like Europol make sure all of its member states meet the standards of respecting human rights, the rights of refugees, under the Geneva Convention? Well, Mr. Bavilaru is not having the best time through all of this. At least we can thank him for giving us the case that shows that the European Union needs to send out the memo again and that all its member states need a corruption-free justice system, and that it can do better in respecting human rights. That way we won't have to create any more of our very own refugees.